Now, what are you going to show us today? It looks like we got some copper wire. Look out, somebody might try to steal that. And some aluminum. Okay, so this is tubing. Or not, yeah, tubing. tubing. Not I wire. said wire. A wire. Copper wire. <laughs> yes. He's got electricity on the brain. He's been electrocuted a little. Yes. Too yes. It's bonus footage. <laughs> what do you expect? All right. Let's. Uh, yeah. Let's figure it out now. How common is this where you need to solder both <clears throat> copper tubing and aluminum tubing? Well, it's actually fairly common in our industry to be able to, to need to join copper and aluminum tubing together um, yeah. because a lot of times where we run our interconnecting lines between indoor and outdoor units, we're using copper. Mm -hmm. um, and then on our coils now, we're using a lot more aluminum uh, because it, it uh, is supposed to be more durable and it gotcha. also transfers heat well. Yes. So this joint is actually becoming more common in the industry. Historically, it hasn't been as common, but there are a couple manufacturers out there that use a lot of copper to aluminum joints, and this is a way to fix those okay. uh, very easily in the field using uh, common tools. Perfect. So here's the common tools that we have. So let's let's walk through the process. How are we going to do this? Okay, so we've got two uh, ends here on the uh, tubing. Um, we've already got them cut. The copper is prepped and ready to go. We need to prepare the aluminum tubing. So we're gonna start with the tubing reamer. We're gonna take the little burr off that uh, gets left inside of the aluminum tubing or any okay. tubing when you use a tubing cutter. All right, and then we're gonna use a tubing expander. And what this is gonna do, when you make a, an aluminum to copper joint, you want to have the aluminum on the outside of the copper whenever possible. Why because is that? When we heat it up, we're gonna to wanna to heat the copper because it has a much higher melting point than the aluminum does. So we heat the copper, and then that's gonna transfer the heat inside the mm. joint and allows us to pull the weld metal inside the joint and make that seat really well between the two. Nice. Make, it, make a nice tight okay. joint right there. So this is a hand tubing expander. Uh, there's a lot of options available out there on the market. This just happens to be a, a, a fairly inexpensive option that a lot of people can find out there today. Um, it does take a little bit more work and a little bit more finesse than uh, some of the other uh, options. I see that, how you're kind of turning it. Yep, you got to turn it a little bit. You smart, start off on the smallest size and you work your way up and then flip it around. And this side, I'm not going to squeeze it together. So I'm not going to spread the two apart. Okay. All I'm going to do is try to work that in there. Nope, gotcha. I got to go a little bit farther okay. on the... Uh, so it's a good test. Expander. There, see yep. if you're done. It's a good test. I should be able to just smoothly push the next size larger inside of that okay. um, in order to uh, to make it fit. So you don't want to stretch it too far, right? Because then you can't get the weld metal to fill the joint properly. Yeah, if you do go too far, you're just gonna have to recut it. Right. You just cut it back and start over yeah. again. That's frustrating. It, it is, and sometimes <laughs> when you're out in the field, you don't have much material to deal with, so you've got to be real careful of that. Right. Uh, now, of course, you know, if I was out in the field, I'd probably be standing on my head. It'd be raining and muddy <laughs> and something along those lines or hot on a roof somewhere. Yeah. Not standing in here in, the, Oops, uh, there in we go. an easy studio um, <laughs> where it looks really easy to right. do this. Okay, so there we've got that pushed in there. It's seated all the way down in um, as far as that needs to go in that. Okay. So then we're going to push the two of these together right here. Okay, slide them together, make sure they're seated together nicely. Now, for this process, we're going to use our Alcop braze rod. All right, this is a channel flux rod, which means the weld metal is on the outside, and in the center, we actually have a channel where the flux necessary for this process lays in there. So as you're using this rod, it automatically fluxes the joint. Wow. Okay. So now this process, I'm gonna use a propane torch which has a lower flame temperature, but it is, it is uh, easier to handle a lot of times than a settling torch. Okay. Um, and it's a lot more portable because you don't have to deal with hoses and all kinds of other things like nice. that. So. Okay, let's fire let's it up. Let's start this up. Hey, you're right, a lot. A lot quieter than the last torch. A lot you quieter. Used. Yeah. Your ears like this better, do yes, they? Yes, they do. This is also a lot more manageable as far as temperature-wise. So you just want to start laying it in there, heat it up, 
Oh, look at that. And it flows right down in. Okay. I mean, you got to almost kind of take like the Bob Ross approach here and be really artistic with your brush strokes because you don't want to just jam it in there. I mean, you got to be delicate to Correct. make sure it spreads evenly. And you also have to be very careful not to overheat the aluminum mm -hmm. because the aluminum melts at about 1200 degrees. And if you get that aluminum too hot, it is really easy. And as soon as you get that aluminum too hot, it just literally disappears. Oh my it's gosh. gone. And then you're starting all over again anyways. Okay. okay. So I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to roll this over and see how the underside looks. Because sometimes you got to work your way all the way around. Yeah. And as we're sitting here on the table, it's a little harder to work, work our way all the way around uh, because I don't have the space. We do have a uh, fire retardant blanket down here. Yes. <laughs> but um, I really don't want to light anything on fire in here today. So. Okay. Now, how long does it uh, how long does it take to you have to let that cool off? You want to let that sure cool. It is bonded. Correct. You want to let it cool off because if you cool it too fast, you can actually crack the joint, hmm. right? Because it'll be a, a real fast contraction. Um, again, we've got heat transfer materials here, but there's a lot of heat concentrated right in that one area, so we right. need to let it cool off a little bit. And then again, we're going to take our uh, stainless brush, dip it in the water, and we're going to clean any of the flux off around that joint. Uh, and do a good visual inspection on that joint. And then, just like we did on the last video, we're gonna put some pressure inside of this and um, see okay. what uh, see how much it'll hold. Perfect. So, so that is all hooked up. We're now starting, we're getting, pretty, <laughs> we're getting pretty warm right there. Okay. That's called a fast test. See, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty warm hot. over there. If you put it over here, it's warmer. Uh, I'm, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> we're so getting we're gonna close. hear a little bit of we should Water hear a little bit of hiss, but we're going to start farther away. You can hear the brushes. Yeah, there it is. There right. you can hear the hiss. Yep. Right, so we can hear that hiss coming up here. And we'll put this on a little farther. We'll put a little water on farther away. Sometimes you can do this with a wet, wet rag. I just drip, dip a little on with the brush. Yeah. And we put that water on farther away. It'll actually help cool things down just a little quicker through evaporation. So contractors, don't just take your Mountain Dew and just dump it on there. No. You, know, you gotta be delicate with That's this. a waste of good Mountain Dew. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I forgot you're a Coke guy, aren't you? I'm Dr. Pepper, man. Oh, <laughs> the pepper. The pepper. The pepper. Okay, so we'll brush there this we down real good. There we go. I saw a sample piece earlier, and this actually looks pretty smooth compared to that. This one might be even better than the it's, first one. It's pretty good. Um, so you can that see, I actually tight. got I actually got a little bit hot on the aluminum right here. I if see you look that. at that, um, I, I held it on there just a little bit too long. I do have a little bit of a drip down here because I got a little excessive, and uh, that's probably some of that drip down right there. Okay. Um, this is a process you need to pay attention to, and you need to practice with uh, before you go out and try it in the field. Um, I would would practice with it a couple times just so you know what you're doing before you go jumping right into it. But this looks like a good tight joint as I'm seeing everything on there. Um, Things don't always have to be the prettiest sometimes to hold and make it work. Right. So that's all that matters. Shall we put a little pressure on this Let's and see do what it. happens? Okay. So we have our uh, our trusty nitrogen bottle back here. We will hook this up. I've got a uh, fitting uh, in the end, and both ends of this should be sealed up now. There we go. Tyler, do we have the royalties to play Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie? No. <laughs> I felt that would be appropriate. All right, so tank's turned on, and yeah, let's throw a little bit of pressure in here and see what happens. Okay, so we'll run it up a little bit. We'll put some leak bubbles in here. Bring out the leak bubbles again. Again, with the leak bubbles. Let's see if that bubbling on the aluminum. I don't, I don't see anything. Not seeing anything so far. Not yet. Let's crank it up. All right. Now, there's not going to be a scenario where this gets too pressurized and this thing's just going to shoot right in my face, is it? It's always possible. Anything's possible. Okay. Dude. Well, but I got no, my... Not, not very possible. <laughs> trusty goggles on that will save me. If I were a betting man, I would bet against that. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, we're up to about 400 PSI or so there. And no bubbles. Nice, tight joint. No bubbles. 
So Problem in solved. the field, wipe it off with a little bit more water to get our bubble solution off there, make sure it's nice and clean, put it back into service. Awesome. Look at that. Just like that. Just like that. All right, so if you have any more questions uh, for Eric or you want to ask us questions about how you can get these products from Jackson Systems, they're available on the website. You can also call us at 888-652-9663 or use that email address. Send us uh, your questions at info at jacksonsystems.com. I'm J.D. Brake. This was Eric Kaiser. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to smack that like button below. And if you want notifications on brand new videos that are coming out tailored just for you, be sure to subscribe right here to the Jackson Systems YouTube channel. Now, if there's some videos you missed, you can always check it out right here. Go ahead and click. Subscribe. Other videos. Like. Do it.